All right, guys, welcome back. This is Bass Feed. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview of my setup. video I'll just basically show you my setup this is sort of a before and after setup because I'm in the process of getting situated um, but you know kind of a fun long-term project and I'm sure it'll evolve into a really fun series of videos so for starters uh, this is my place and uh, I live on five acres um, we got the property for work I, I run a landscape company so um, way back there is my house uh, you can see it right there so um, just a short walk to my bass fishing headquarters here and uh, I'm having a little fun with this area and um, this is just on the precipice of getting started so uh, bear with me but um, you get to maybe see how this plays out as I um, work on some things here. So for starters, this is the fun part for me. I have, you can see back here, um, my own pond. So I've already stocked it with some uh, pretty big bass. So I have some, I have nine bass and probably five of them are over three pounds. So those are my pet bass. And uh, we got um, Billy, John, Fred and uh, I'm just kidding. I don't actually have names for them, but fun stuff. It's a, it's a pretty good setup. I got some nice cover over here, um, trees, brush, um, uh, tons of frogs, bugs, and that sort of thing. So as long as I guess they're fed properly, they'll um, keep growing and hopefully transform into some um, pet trophies. We got my little setup here. I just built this carport here. I keep my John boat back here. Over time, I'll get this a little better organized. Storage area, which is a complete mess right now because I've ripped through it uh, doing a few things, um, organizing for camping trips, that sort of thing. So just bear with me. This is sort of a mess, but this is, you know, this is sort of a before video. So once I get it settled, it'll be um, a little more organized, a little more clean looking. So this is where my baby is stored. And I'll go over that in a little more details. I know some of y'all were wondering what my setup is on my new boat and uh, we'll go through that. And right next door here, you can see right behind me, this is an old office that we had. Um, back in the day, we didn't really have an office for the business and we built this standalone structure here uh for just that but over time it was sort of abandoned and uh i thought hell this is a great spot to set up sort of a fishing room so let's take a peek in here okay so it's not very organized yet i, mean, I got my mini fridge a few nice fishing pictures here um, when I was in Louisiana catching big redfish, see a little better here. Oh yeah, big old reds, big old reds. And I love red fishing. I do that when I can. But... And here's my uh, bait modification station. You know, I, this is where I change out all my trebles. Um, I go through my baits every spring, make sure there's no rusty hooks and repair the hooks I can, replace the ones that are irreparable and so on so kind of a cool setup i get to just sit here uh and dream about fish in early spring you know before uh, the bike gets going and i can get things ready as you can see i didn't actually finish up last spring i got so excited i just got fishing a little early and uh never actually finished yeah cleaning hooks and all that so and of course I got my backup baits here. So um, it's looking pretty sparse right now. I broke into my backups pretty heavy this year. Did a lot more fishing than I expected, but uh, nice little setup. I recommend this if you have room at home. I just got it on OfferUp. 
and shoot, I think this was like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. I don't even remember. It came with all the hangers and just, uh, yeah, mounted it. And now this is a perfect place to throw my backup baits. Got my hangers and everything for my gear, my rain gear. And uh, as you can see here, I have an empty wall. Now I have lots of, I got a man cave at home and I have a lot of my fun fishing pictures and memories posted down there, but I'm going to transition a lot of that over here. Maybe this will be a little bit more competitive fishing oriented, maybe be able to hang a couple plaques and possibly a trophy or two. Now I'm hoping to start with angler of the year this year, and that would be a great start to that idea. Hopefully over the years, I put together enough accolades to fill the wall and this isn't a big wall. I feel like that's not a tall order, but all right, here's my baby. I'm going to pull the boat out and we'll go through my specific setup. Basically, I'm, I'm, I'm set up to be tournament ready right out the gate. And uh, clearly it's good enough for tournaments. But uh, over the years, I imagine I do some additional upgrades because this thing's not complete, complete. Yeah. So let's pull her out and go through everything. All right, guys. Here's the boat, I pulled her out, and I'm gonna go through my specific setup for um, what I need to just get the job done. Now, I haven't put a whole lot of money into this. I know guys spend a lot of money on their setups, but um, I'm not made of money. So, I just did what I looked at as the bare minimum based on my budget and where I'd like to be long-term on my boat. And I think it's a very good setup for those who can afford this as a starting point on their boat. Um, realistically, especially when it comes to competitive fishing. So uh, here we go, let's just go through it. So for starters, I'm gonna go through um, just the additions I've done to the boat. Now starting in the back, these uh, boat buckles are great. They're, they're, they're not fancy, it's not the retractable. Perfectly happy with them, I've used them over the years and I think they're solid. And then another silly little thing, uh, tail lights for the boat trailer. Now, get a good quality trailer light, do your connections well, insulate them, uh, LED of course, and that way you just don't have to fuss with them for a number of years. I'm thinking up to 10 years. I went ahead and put a swim ladder on this baby. So this is the unit, You just it just bolts onto your hole here and uh, your transom and uh, the swim ladder slides in and locks in. Now, I got one with four steps, so it's very easy to get in and out. You don't have to look like a goddamn beached whale jumping on and off your boat, and um, very comfortable. And I sit there with my little one. I have a two-year-old who swims with me, and I can hang on to this thing, sit on the ladder and play with him in the middle of the lake and feel very comfortable. So absolute worth it. If you since if you got a tracker and you don't have a swim ladder, which they don't have, um, go with a better setup. This one was like 300 bucks. It wasn't cheap, but no regrets. If you plan on doing some swimming with the family, uh, absolutely worth it. If it's just a safety deal, and it's just for just in case you fall in the water and you need to just get on, get back on your boat. Uh, you don't need to go with the with the expensive one. Get a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar one, and that's I'm sure going to be just fine. But in this case, no regrets. I just keep the ladder stowed in my uh, bigger compartment up front, and um, yeah, good. Uh, no regrets on that upgrade. All right, let's hop up, and I'll show you the other things that I've done. All right, let's start in the back. Okay, so you see here, I got those uh, Tracker Lithium batteries. I got the 80 amp hour. So I had a little problem with these when I originally installed them. It seems like I got a bad battery or two just right off the bat. But after I got that resolved, um, they have been great. Definitely a recommendation. Uh, I never really had power problems in the first place, but I do like that I've, I got reduced weight and I've literally never ran these low um, since I got this boat and I've fished for days I fished for three days straight and didn't even get a low signal on my trolling motor uh, so that's pretty damn good already and well worth the money all right and while I'm back here I'm going to just show you a couple things that they're not really upgrades but I found to be um, very useful 
so when I did have problems with power, which I'll go over with you guys in a minute, um, occasionally I would kill my cranking battery and whether it's a problem for you or not, I think it's a huge advantage to get this and just keep it in your boat. I paid $80 for these, but that's before inflation. So I'm, I imagine a decent setup for a lithium jumper pack is probably 100 $120. This just connects into here and it's waterproof. Uh, connect to your cranking battery and you get jump start. Super useful in a pinch. I've used it a couple times. Uh, another small thing that I thought is worth noting is uh, I don't know if you guys use super glue, but if you do, you know that after a couple uses, uh, you can't even get the glue out of the bottle and you basically have to scrap it and it's a waste of glue. I thought, dang, they should have single use glue uh, tubes and sure as hell, Amazon, 24 for 12 bucks. And now I can use one of these tubes for a week. So I don't think I have to buy glue for a couple years. So that was pretty huge. The units I went with, I didn't want to spend a fortune. I can't remember how much these costed, but I want to say they're about 900 bucks. So that's a little more than I, you know, that some people like to spend. But in my case, it's obviously not as expensive as, you know, high end uh, units. But this one, this is the Echo Map 93 SV. And these are just a standard unit from Garmin. But I will tell you, this has incredible detail. Very clear. Side imaging is fantastic. For a nine inch screen, it just, you can't beat it. And, and I just love how this attaches on right here. And I went with Garmin uh, because I got the live scope. I had to start off on the right foot because I spent so much money on this boat. I wanted to get an affordable unit, but good enough to where I wouldn't feel I need to upgrade very quickly. Uh, so that, yeah, that's my console unit. I only have one console unit. Um, if I have to, I use my Navionics on my phone as a secondary a screen if I'm, if I'm marking and, and uh, scanning. Otherwise, I'll just use a split screen on a nine inch, which is not great, but it's doable. It is absolutely doable. I scan and prep for tournaments and I don't have a problem using this. Now, of course, it'd be more comfortable to have two screens over time, but for now, that's fantastic. So the next upgrade that I've done is since I'm running live scope, I'm running it off my cranking battery. Now that's a big no-no. I had to learn the hard way. So when I'm on the water using live scope for an extended period of time is drawing a lot of power from the uh, cranking battery. And that, that uh, if you don't start up the motor and you're fishing for a good portion of the day, you will drain your cranking battery and you won't be able to start your motor to get back to the boat launch if you run it empty. That is why I got the lithium charger pack and that is why I can testify to it working because I've had to use it on a number of occasions because of this problem. So when I brought it back to Cabela's, they wanted to do a few things to improve my power usage on the boat. And the, uh, the options that they were giving me were just very expensive, starting at a lithium cranking battery to power pull, uh, power setup, uh, I forget what they call that. They had a number of options and all of them were very expensive. I said, screw that. And I was praying that my simple fix was going to pay off. And under the circumstances, it paid off real big because all I did was upgrade my two bank, which came with the boat to a, a 10 amp three bank battery charger. What they, what this has done is now when I plug in my boat every day, I charge the cranking battery to the top. So when I start fresh every day, I'm starting with a full cranking battery. And just that adjustment alone was making it to where I can fish almost all day without starting the boat and charging my cranking battery. Now, the only exception to this is when I'm running my live wells continuously on a hot day on tournament day and my live scope all day, I will end up probably having an issue. It hasn't happened yet uh, because I'm, I'm conscientious about it, but that would be the only scenario where maybe this fix wouldn't be 
enough but uh it is good enough and it seems to be working fine i've done multiple tournaments i've been on live skip all day and uh and it's worked out great so highly recommend if you get this set up without spending an extra two or three grand just upgrade this unit here and it was only an extra since i sold the last unit i don't know i want to say it was 100 bucks to get this upgrade plus installation which is an easy install so that was huge saved a lot of money on that idea and very happy with that next upgrade now i did do the vinyl uh and that's a factory upgrade now not crazy about it i did clean it for the first time and it was easy to clean now that is huge but really though this vinyl gets hot and so i can't really fish barefoot on the hotter days and i used to fish barefoot a lot so that's a little problem for me i feel like the trade-off is it's about even so i'm not sure i would do the upgrade again if i if i did this over now if you never fish barefoot anyway and and you think it's a pain in the butt cleaning your carpets every year then go with the vinyl but if you love fishing barefoot and you don't mind the cleaning of the carpets don't even bother with the vinyl now it's only an extra 600 bucks that's just the way i see it and uh that is a hundred percent accurate way to read into that situation whether it's worth it to you or not to do the vinyl uh next thing i did was uh, i did a, a new um new pedestal new seat i i copped for a little bit better seat because i just don't want to deal with it again with the amount of time i spend up front um, i wanted a good seat adjustable and uh no regrets there i think between the two is probably 250 300 dollars at the time, I just wanted to do it right, and, and I, no regrets. And it matches my boat. I took the time to pick out uh, a seat that matches my tracker. So pretty sweet. Now up front, I went with another uh, Echo Map, same uh, same unit. Um, I got them on sale at the time, and uh, this is where it snaps in. Great unit, big enough uh, to read the screen for live scope. I would say at minimum, you want to do a nine inch screen if you're using any uh, front facing sonar. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to bend over a lot and try to figure out what you're looking at and uh, that is no good. Where to get another screen up front, I would go a little bigger, but it's all dependent on your budget and uh, you know what you're, what you're aiming to get. So nine inch I think is great, balancing budget with, um, with you know efficiency. And I went with the Garmin Force up front. As far as the trolling motor, great unit, can't complain, but I spent an extra thousand dollars to get this Rolls Royce of trolling motors. Now, the question is, is, is this unit worth the extra money? I can't confidently say yes. I was upsold on it since I was going Garmin and everything else. Uh, the guy couldn't stress enough that I should go Garmin on the, on the unit as well. And, I did it, but honestly, looking back on things, I loved my Minn Kota trolling motors, and I still have one on my John boat. And uh, I could have spent less money and got a, a great unit and, and would have never regretted it. So I can't confidently say, hey, yeah, the Garmin's an extra thousand dollars. It's totally worth it. But I, I cannot complain about the unit itself. It's quiet, it's powerful. I haven't broken a prop yet, which is a common problem. And uh, the only thing that's happened is uh, my cable is having a little problem. You know, I was about to take it in and it, it just started working better. Um, I oiled everything and it did start working a little better. It's not to the point to where I need to take it in and get it repaired. Uh, it will be covered by the two year warranty when I want to get it addressed, but uh, not enough to worry about during my fishing season, I'll bring it in this winter and get it adjusted other than that great unit it does take a little trick to uh adjust the depth on this i found out later that you can't adjust it stowed you cannot adjust it when it's fully stowed you have to adjust it when it's partially deployed to get that tight enough to keep it at the depth that you want now that's a little trick i don't know if everyone everyone's unit has that same issue but once it's once you figure that out it's actually great 
and that was one of my main complaints on this when I first got it I thought this is stupid it doesn't even stay at the right depth but I figured that out so overall with these little uh, minor issues it it works great and I hum I mean this is a big boat and I'm I'm humming around in full speed and uh, it's a great motor other than that so and obviously I got the live scope that's been fantastic and I think it was worth it at first I didn't I wasn't really sure and I wasn't very good at using it but over the time over time I've practiced and I've gotten the hang of it and and now looking back I absolutely think it was worth the money I know it was very expensive and a lot of people are on the fence about it but if you can afford it throw it on your boat play around and in a lot of situations it can help you if you're not good enough to spot the fish you can you can definitely spot cover and structure really easy from without having to start scanning back and forth uh so it's a and and if you can't see the fish throw out cover throw out uh throw out the structure that you're seeing and a lot of times the fish are right where you think they are and if you just need to pinpoint your cast that's how you do it live scopes the, the, you know it's money now i haven't used perspective mode too much but uh, uh maybe i'll get a little better i got the perspective mount from summit and uh this is a shitty mount so do not if you want to go perspective do not get the summit i don't know if everyone has the same problems but it, it wore out like after adjusting it just a few times and now it doesn't stay in place when i tighten um it's kind of like stripped because it's plastic and then you can tell here that it's um it's it, it's a different color because the plastic has worn out already and you could tell that this thing is just 3d printed and that's how they do these things so um yeah plastic's already worn and faded and it doesn't even look that great on my trolling motor and the adjustments are already shot so if i were to redo it i don't know what it was pay the extra 40 bucks for the proper mount okay so i believe that sums up everything on the upgrades so stay tuned i'm going to do a full review on this boat coming up very shortly and i'm a little over the one year mark but uh, i'm going to throw that together that'll be my next video so if anyone's actually looking to get a tracker uh, definitely subscribe and uh, wait for that review to come through now I, i'm going to do I've, I've put a ton of hours on this boat in a short amount of time so i absolutely know the strengths and weaknesses of this particular setup so um i'll go through that and uh in my next video and stay tuned anyway there you go there's my uh walk through on my setup and now you guys know i know a few of you guys ask me like hey you should really explain your setup and 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 uh, what you've done to your boat so there you go there you have it and stay tuned for the full review which i'm filming next so thanks a lot guys and uh stay tuned this should be really fun i'm gonna keep working at my pond i'm gonna make it a little better i'm gonna get an aerator out there i'm gonna get some um e ecosystem set up for my pet bass and uh, it should be really fun my little one's going to practice fishing. He's two years old and he can already cast a bait caster. Um, I mean, he's, he's pretty dang good. He's been casting since he was uh, probably 18 months old, which is crazy. And so he's going to be in here catching some lunkers here soon. It won't take long. He's going to, he, he's going to reel in his first, uh, his first biggin. And so stay tuned on that. And then, uh, my fishing room, that should be fun to, uh, get set up proper like and um should be a nice nice setup for uh, all my backup baits and all that fun stuff will be uh available in there thanks for tuning in guys appreciate it and i'll check in with you guys on the boat review